One day, in a country far, far away and long ago, there was a free application of the day. And on a whim, I downloaded this free application of the day. And this free application day was free application of the day was called King's Empire. So I went in to see what King's Empire was all about. And before you click into the next slide, there are a few people, or there were at the beginning, who would talk about Sir Knights and all this rubbish. But the majority of people who play it are pretty normal, although you do meet some mad ones. Right, shall we dive in, Casey? No, no return. No return. So what's King's Empire? King's Empire is something you can play on your phone or your tablet. It's a massive multiplayer online game, and it's a way for a load of people to interact around a set, a set scenario, or a set of scenarios. Well, 20 seconds is quite long, isn't it, when you're standing at the front? <laughs> <laughs> I'm currently running at least five King's Empire accounts, my own and other people's, on various <laughs> servers. The basic objective, in the most basic terms, is to build cities, which doesn't mean you're physically doing anything, it's just pushing a button, allocating resources to building. So you build an academy, you build a barracks, you build a living quarters, all that kind of stuff. And there's a limit to what you can build until the developers come up with new things, but once you do it, you then train troops. And you train troops, why do you train troops? You train troops, you could use them to beat other people up who are also playing it, or you could use them just to go out farming, for want of a better word, from non-player characters that we'll see in a moment. They call it a war game, it's not a war game, it's a strategy game. Um, you're training the troops and you're working out what to do with it, and it gives you a level of power versus the, the other people. So you've got your troops, here's an attack, on this. that's a robber's camp, and from a level 5 robber's camp you get a certain amount of wood and a certain amount of iron and a certain amount of other things, which you can then use to build and to train. It's build and to train, and it's build and to train, and it goes on. And it's been going on like this since April the 25th this, uh, last year. Does King's Empire cost? Well, it can cost nothing. There are some people who are very proud not to have ever paid a penny or a cent in most cases to play King's Empire. And then there are people who have invested heavily. Within two weeks of the server, one of the servers I'm on, people had gone orange in terms of on world chat, which meant they'd spent at least 350 US dollars on their account. And it, not many people do that, but there are a few. How much time? Well, you could do it and you could go away from a month and you could come back again. You won't get a very far like that, of course, but it's just something to do. Or it can be all-consuming, and you can spend pretty much 24 hours a day, every day doing it. In all time zones, players are from around the world, so it's all times a day there's stuff going on. <coughs> it's basically a giant spreadsheet. Underlying it all, it's all numbers. It's a, this many pieces of um, iron and wood make this many buildings, which allow you to do this so fast, um, to build troops, which then can then attack uh, with such a touch attack numbers vis-a-vis -vis the defender, and so on and so forth. So far, so good. This is risk, or this is chess. But what makes it really great is the people. I've led alliances, alliances of 50 people, 100 people with members from the States, New Zealand, Canada, Australia, Lithuania, Sweden, Germany, uh, Iran, Korea, Vietnam, Japan. We've got a problem with a girl at the moment. She only speaks Japanese, and we only speak English, or various other languages, but no Japanese. We can't communicate with her, and we want to promote her. And the politics, the politics is so, it's absolutely fascinating. You form alliances, so there on the left, the Dark Cloud is a bloke and Horizon is his alliance. You can see Horizon, Watchmen, Vietnam, Persian, they're the top alliances in this game. My alliances on this server were Horizon, Watchmen, and number six, so one, two, and six. And there's espionage. What goes in the game is not just build and train, it's what are people doing? How can you get ahead? How, what someone else can do? How ruthless are you going to be? Uh, this is somebody from another server coming across saying, I know people on your server, they're aggressive, they're nasty buggers, and they're going to try and take over. The, the answer to this is we already knew this, and we've been having a go at them. <laughs> But it doesn't stop. It really is like this. Something will amaze you every day, every day. There are friends. There's even been a King's Empire internet wedding. And I have no idea what you do with a King's Empire internet wife or a husband. They do it in private chat rooms, and I don't want to be part of that. But, <laughs> but that's the point. People form relationships. It's mostly blokes, but there are plenty of women on this as well. <laughs> what have I learned? I've learned technology. I've learned about chat applications. I chat with a Russian. Who are, he's writing Russian, and I'm writing English. It's amazing. <laughs> 
in the pub. That's a tiny sample of all the um, chat rooms I'm in. There's ministers' rooms, there's a hangout room, there's a general room, there's individual players you're talking to, there's the politics, there's working out who's going to do what, getting organised, management skills, there's hundreds of people, different time zones, different outlooks. What is winning? Is winning being the highest number of points, having the biggest army, being in the biggest alliance, smashing the most other people, just farming and contentedly sitting there and not getting flattened. Winning can be loads of things. You've got to bring all this together to manage an alliance. Some people are unruly, other people just want to be quiet. Language. I've learned a whole new language. Now I use LOL, I use LMAO, although... <laughs> I still don't get LMAO. Why is it like, why is it not laughing your ass off funny? But anyway, there's sorry, Poppy. There's TTYL. I still haven't got to bomb with that one. There's using the um, the faces for happy and the winking and all that kind of stuff. And it's brought me. I'm an old fart, and it's learning in a whole new world. What have I learned? I've learned strategy. I've learned ruthlessness. I've learned communication. I've learned organisation. I've learned intelligence, power, and betrayal. This is what King's Empire is. It's not the spreadsheet. It's what everyone does around it. You want to be. You want to be the top. And um, it's really soul destroying. If you spend hours and hours and hours and hours and hours, and suddenly you wake up in the morning, all your armies are gone because you've been fastened by two people while you're asleep. That is soul destroying. <laughs> But then there's the developers. The developers are the enemy. The developers want to volatility. They want you to spend money, so they want people to be destroyed, and they want people to aspire to stuff. So they want you to buy gems, and gems are what, what you spend real money to get, although you can get them in-game for free, but it takes much longer. What are the business lessons? Well, I've talked about a load, but then there's also branding. Keep building, training, donating. Be proud to be a member of the Watchman family. That's my catchphrase, and it caught on. Um, when I was in dirty shoes, I said, keep those shoes dirty, and other people were reciting it back to me. I couldn't believe it. I made it up it was to be amusing. Um, tap, the business model is fantastic. There's people running all these servers. Um, your school, things a bit odd. People running all these servers <laughs> and people paying to play. And there's no ongoing cost for developers. There's half a dozen of them, or ten of them in China. Don't restrict your own company or your alliance to one nationality because you'll get good people who won't join it. Um, English language is best. When I joined the last server, there were Russians, Vietnamese, Koreans, and all the top alliances. Now it's all English language. Is it a virtual world? Is it a real world? It's real money if you're paying. It's real psychology if you wake up and you've just lost 15 weeks of work. Uh, it's real time you're spending and it's real management. There are people who are too difficult to manage, people you want on your side, you promote some ministers. There's all sorts going on. King's Empire's bloody amazing, lol. It's, I recommend it. Now you know why I didn't have to script it. I could talk about this for hours. So it's free, yeah? It is free, yes. Unless you choose to pay for stuff later on. Okay. Right. Does anyone have any questions? I have no idea. I don't. Were the rules kind of set out to start with, or the rules just evolved as people around the world when you, kind of interacted? Well, there aren't many rules. Um, there are a few rules. What you can say on the global chat inside the game, so other people can see there are moderators, and um, you do a series of quests when you first start, learning how to build a building and to train a few troops and a few other things just to get you into it but once you're past that it's assumed you know what you're doing and it's up to you to either work out what you're doing or to talk to other people and that people use did I say third party applications to do that but no one said you can try you know skullduggery and espionage and all that that just sort of happens that happens that happens because they're going to get you otherwise yeah. <laughs> I've never been flattened in, in all my time and I have to say that I'm very proud of that because I actually went on a bit of a rampage and took out several top players in my original server <laughs> before giving my account subtly named Richard to somebody else before he got flattened with it but um, yes and we came across as a team to the new server four of us from the previous server five of us actually and we managed to get from nowhere to being the number one alliance before one of our ministers left because he was invited to go to another alliance who had just been just beaten, basically. And um, he was the most powerful player on the board, that minister, because he had spent on armies. And an event came at the right time in the new server, and it made such a difference to, to who was strong and who was powerful. But now, effectively, they and three alliances that we run are all one single happy, hopefully, most of the time, family. Right, I'm sorry to cut you off, but last quick question. Please. Quick, quick question. How did they consummate the no idea. I don't, I don't ask, but they broke up, they had their difficulties, and they've got back together again now. <laughs> Apparently it wasn't really his photo he was using in his profile picture. <laughs> Although, frankly, frankly, when I saw his real photo, I couldn't tell the difference, so I don't know why I bothered. Right, anyway, thank you very much, yeah?